What's up everyone? It's Brian here from Exact IT Solutions. Welcome to another YouTube video where we talk about all those things that are going on in the world of cybersecurity. And boy, do I have a ton of stuff to cover with y'all today. Um, we got a bunch of hacks to go through. Uh, I'm going to quickly blow through uh, some recent uh, uh, attacks uh, that happened uh, in the last week or two. Um, I did take some time off for the Christmas, New Year's holidays. That's why I haven't been posting. But now that we are into the new year, uh, expect a, a good amount of content to come from this channel. Uh, and especially since it appears that we got cyber attacks coming from all over the place. And we're going to get into that today. Uh, some uh, regular hacks from hacking criminals. We got hacks from state-sponsored uh, organizations, updates to solar winds, uh, and we also have, uh, you know, some some competitors hacking one another, if you believe that. So not only do you have to worry about state-sponsored criminals, cyber criminals, but you also got to worry about your competitors um, hacking your network too, and we'll dig into that a little bit today too. Um, so, uh, but before we get into our content, my friendly reminder, we still don't get paid for this channel, um, and we still don't do the Patreon. We don't uh, annoy you with our own ads within the content, and the only fee that I ask of you is that you hit that like button down below, and if you're so inclined, maybe you consider subscribing uh, to our ever-growing subscriber channel uh, list uh, the exclusive exact IT YouTube subscriber designation that you might have. And hey, you never know, I might pick a, uh, a lucky subscriber to, to win a prize every, every now and then. So it's probably worth it to subscribe to our channel. So without further ado, folks, let's jump into today's content. All right, so uh, rolling into today's content, I'm gonna try to keep this under 15 minutes. I got a lot of tabs open in my browser. We'll see what happens. Hey, T-Mobile, you're on fire here. Four hacks in three years, not bad. Um, this, this joke of a company, um, I don't know why anybody still uses them after this, but a security incident at T-Mobile has resulted in customer data being accessed. The telecommunications giant has said the hack, which was first reported on December 29th, affected around 200,000 customers. Uh, it leaked. The leaked data may have included customer phone numbers and other call-related information uh, that, the, that the company collected as part of the normal operation of your wireless service. No financial data or sensitive personal information such as social security numbers was accessed. Um, it goes on to say, and these, these are the disturbing parts, although it isn't clear exactly how the malicious unauthorized hackers gained access to the data, T-Mobile said it has employed an external cybersecurity company to conduct an investigation. Um, and they also immediately reported the matter to federal law enforcement and are now in the process of notifying impacted customers. Um, so T-Mobile hit again. I don't know uh, how you guys feel about this, but um, getting hit this many times in, in such a short period of time, you really, you really got to wonder what's going on over there at T-Mobile. Um, so uh, moving right along, you got Whirlpool appliances in your house. Yeah, unfortunately, they were hit with ransomware uh, as well. Um, so a new gang I've never heard of, Nephilim, Nephilim ransomware gang, takes responsibility for a, a, a hit against the major appliance manufacturer, Whirlpool. Uh, and they were, they acknowledged their ransomware attack in, uh, that they were hit in November. Um, and, and as I was saying all through December, man, we, weren't, we aren't hearing about a lot of cyber attacks, but we know that they're going on. Um, the problem is, is that what we're seeing is companies are getting hit, um, not thinking that, oh, I don't, I don't need to report this. I know one needs to know about this until their information shows up on the dark web. And then they're like, oopsie, 
I guess we got to tell people that their information is on the dark web and the reason it's there is because we got attacked a month or two ago. Um, and this isn't the only instance where I'm going to talk about a, a similar uh, set of circumstances where a company is like, yeah, we got hacked a while ago and now it's, it's over here on the dark web and we just want to let you kind of know about that. Um, guys, if, if you're hacked, just assume your data is stolen and just come out and tell people um, and, and don't try to hide it and obfuscate it and pay the ransom and think that nobody nobody's ever going to hear or know about it. Those days are over. These criminals operate a lot of different ways. And, you know, you just paying the ransom and it never getting out there, it just doesn't happen anymore. So uh, article just goes on to say last month, Whirlpool Corporation discovered ransomware in their environment. The malware was detected and contained. A company spokesperson tells uh, Information Security Media Group. Uh, Whirlpool says it's unaware of any consumer information being exposed because of the attack and that the ransomware is not causing any operational difficulties at this time. Uh, the company gave no information on the attack's impact upon its systems and operation when it initially took place. Uh, so, you know, the, you know the, they claim to have stole company data. Um, probably why they came out with a statement because uh, you know, the data is going out on the dark web. And as I've been cautioning on this channel many, many times uh, that you, uh, you, if you've been hit with ransomware, you probably have had data stolen. Um, and this smells exactly like what I always say. Um, Whirlpool probably tried to uh, not let this hit the news, but then when the data ended up on the dark web, here we are. So, Whirlpool, Cornelia, a, I believe this is a city in New Hampshire, uh, Cornelia, uh, they were hit with, uh, their, their systems are offline following a ransomware attack the day after Christmas. And there was actually a lot of ransomware attacks right after Christmas. Um, but the city of Cornelia in New Hampshire was hit. Um, and they uh, have gone on to say, I believe this was the city manager, that we have anticipated situations such as this and out of an abundance of cautions we have taken down our network while we investigate and restore our data uh, the release states we have alerted law enforcement and we are cooperating with their investigation um so hey look they say they anticipated a situation to this end uh, but they pulled their systems offline i don't know how well you've anticipated things when you pulled all your systems offline um so GenRx pharmacy ransomware attack leads to HIPAA data breach disclosure. Well, look at that. Somebody got ransomware and then somebody stole their data. Uh, more than 130,000 patients alerted to potential data breach following a healthcare cyber attack. And guess when this happened? On September 28th, the pharmacy found evidence of ransomware on its systems and immediately began an investigation including hiring independent information security and technology experts to assist with incident response and forensic investigation. Um, again, we're hearing about this three, four months after the event took place. Um, again, we're only hearing about this because their information is being exposed publicly by the criminal hackers, not because the company did right by notifying everyone that this happened. They didn't do that, and they didn't do cybersecurity well, so they probably paid the ransomware, and now they're being double extorted because the information's out on the dark web. So they're like, oh great, now this data is out there. Somebody's gonna know it was stolen. We're gonna have to deal with HIPAA, and we're gonna have to deal with the fact that we have 130,000 patient records uh, on the dark web. So, um, another one, TransLink. These guys over in Vancouver. Vancouver Metro. I did a story on this, I don't even remember, months ago, um, about them getting hacked. And I probably said when they got hacked that, the, that they said no data was stolen, yada, yada, yada. And now we find out that ransomware data theft and they're still restoring their systems. 
Um, they announced back in early December that this happened, um, and they basically said that they were a, a target of a ransomware attack on some of their infrastructure, um, and this uh, attack included communication to TransLink through printed messages. Um, and during the attack, the ransomware operators used the company's printers to print out ransomware notes. Uh, it was a Gregor uh, and a tactic that the cybercrime gang also used after infiltrating the network um, of retail giant uh, Sen Kosud in November. Um, so they, they're basically saying that um, TransLink's representatives uh, that the employee banking information may have been stolen. Um, it was a, a series of uh, restricted network drives, uh, and in those drives, it included files that contained banking information and some social insurance numbers uh, for the employees of the uh, outfit. So, um, Chinese. Espionage Group, APT27, moves into ransomware. So APT27, if, it, if you don't know what APT stands for, if you ever see that tied to a hacking group, it essentially means advanced persistent threat. Advanced persistent threat is basically a fancy term given to the fact that somebody is sitting in your network who shouldn't be there for a long time. Um, basically, they have persistent access to your network hence the, the persistent, the P in APT. Um, so these guys, APT groups, the way they work is they typically get access to a network and they just spy. Um, that's what we saw with the, the solar winds attack um, and a lot of the reports that are coming out about that is that um, they weren't really trying to deploy malware or ransomware. They were more or less trying to just read information, collect information, steal information. Um, you know, what's more valuable? Stealing of information when nobody knows you're there or actually just, you know, dropping a ransomware bomb on somebody and saying, hey, F you, pay me. Um, so uh, they're saying that the Chinese espionage group APT27 is moving into ransomware. So basically... What we're going to see as a result of this, I'm not going to go through the article. Um, you know, this is just a, a huge red flag that says be prepared for a lot of ransomware attacks. Because, like I said, APTs have access to networks. They know whose networks they are in at this point. If they've been in them for a long time, once they're in there, they're collecting information. They're figuring out how to do things. Uh, and it sounds like they're moving towards deploying ransomware to maybe get some money in the bank um, or things like that. But um, it's not good at all when you see an advanced persistent threat group basically saying we're going to start deploying ransomware on the networks that we already know we have access to. Um, this is just a, a canary in the coal mine for... Uh, the future, which is going to be probably in end of January, beginning of February, we are going to see a massive amount of global ransomware attacks on entities that probably are not expecting it, unfortunately. So, um, you know, keep keep your eyes out, get your network secure, monitor your networks, try to figure out if somebody's in there who shouldn't be in there, set traps. Um, it's the best thing, best, best thing you can do at this point. Uh, Fergus Falls Health Systems, computer network disrupted after a uh, ransomware attack. This was disclosed on uh, December 31st. It looks like they got into a healthcare network around December 22nd. This is a hospital in, um, excuse me, Minnesota. Uh, CEO Ken Masson said that the federal and local law enforcement have been, um, have been deployed. They're investigating. Um, but here we go, another hospital in the United States hit again. This is probably one of three that I had to choose from. I know there was one up in Vermont. Um, there's a couple others. Um, I think I went out in California uh, in the last week. But, yep, that's kind of where we're at. So, uh, Microsoft. Uh, let's, you know, this is a solar winds kind of a, a shrapnel wound here. Uh the Microsoft says that Russian hacks hacked into its networks viewing source code. Um, 
the reports that I read said that the source code uh, and the, the attack was um, a, a small amount. It wasn't massive. Um, but, yeah, and this, this is cause for concern for sure. I mean, all the Windows systems that are out there, uh, I, I hope it wouldn't be as easy for these cyber criminals to put in a backdoor in like they did in SolarWinds software to put a backdoor into, you know, you know, something like Microsoft Office or Microsoft Windows or Teams or, or what have you. Um, any Microsoft product that you use on your system uh, could have a backdoor implanted in it. Um, and, you know, that's that's the risk you face when you're dealing with something like this. Um, you know, I trust that Microsoft will do a full investigation. They will, um, you know, figure out if anything was manipulated in any way. And I would, you know, assume that they would put a patch out pretty quickly if they discovered that anything uh, malicious was put into their software. Um, but this is uh, an example of the supply chain because you know, one of Microsoft's vendors, SolarWinds, got attacked. Now Microsoft has to deal with 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 a major major problem, uh, trying to figure out, you know, who was in their systems, what did they have access to, what did they touch, what did they do, um, you know, really important stuff here, um, you know. So go, you know, best of luck to, to Microsoft. Um, threats arising from the massive solar winds attack, uh, you know, this article just basically goes in and says, you know. Um, you know, I'll just read it. Like the coronavirus, it came from overseas, arriving initially unnoticed when it finally uh, belatedly discovered the outrage for a few days was at least epic. This is nothing short of a virtual invasion by Russians into criminal accounts or into critical accounts of our federal government. Uh, that came from Senator Dick Durbin. Um, and I... I feel the same way. Republican Senator Mitch Romney also called it an extraordinary invasion of our cyberspace. Um, you know, I I came out in in my second video on solar winds and said that you know that this is no different than the Russians pulling up on our shores and invading our country. And I don't know why we're not treating it as such. Um, this is insane uh, that um, you know that this is going on. Uh, Democratic Representative Jason Crow called the hack breathtaking and referred to it as our modern day cyber Pearl Harbor, which the, which is exactly uh, what I, you know, called it um, in my videos um, when this first hit, you know, and the, and the person goes on to kind of lament, which, which is it, Pearl Harbor, which drew the United States into World War II, or just a massive espionage operation simple to those conducted by the United States around the world? Um so, you know, media, media coverage is faded, um, but, you know, people like me, people in my space, we're, we're concerned and we're echoing these concerns. And that's why I have this, this channel is because this stuff is serious. We need to take it as such. Um, and if your government isn't going to do it, then people, you need, to, you need to figure out how to do it yourselves because everybody's a target. Every single business is a target. If you run a business, um, you need to learn how to protect yourself. Um, because we are failing uh, as governments to, to protect uh, our data, our countries, our computer systems. Uh, and I don't see any light at the end of the tunnel at this point. We have too many other problems that people are focused on at this time. And cybersecurity is not one of them. And I'm going to highlight that here in a, in a minute. Um, as I mentioned, Arcadia Hospital attacked and widespread data beach, breach. Um, I, I did mention this. I'm not going to go into great detail here. I believe this was a, a hospital system out in California, um, another hospital system at the end of December who was attacked. Um, I'm going to move this one to the end real quick. Uh, there was a cyber attack on Apex Laboratory in Farmingdale, New York. Uh, they provide medical testing services to uh, hundreds of home health agencies and thousands of physicians in New York and South Florida. Um, and on, in July, they became, uh, uh, in July 2020, uh, they learned they'd become a victim of a cyber attack that rendered certain files and systems inaccessible. And then they figured out that oh, this information was uh, stolen personal health information for uh, some of their patients. Uh, and then here we go. Um, let me talk about this one. 
real quick, and then we'll get into the rest of it. So to wrap this up, um, I mentioned early in the beginning of the video that not only do you have to worry about cyber criminals and uh, state-sponsored uh, actors hacking into your network, but you also have to worry about your competitors hacking into your network. At least you would hope that your cons competitors were ethically sound enough to where they wouldn't do things like this. However, as we see in this example with Ticketmaster, they've just been handed a $10 million fine for hacking into one of their competitor systems. Uh, Ticketmaster has been slapped with a $10 million fine after it was charged with repeatedly hacking into the computer system of a rival, rival company. Um, and it goes on to say, in court documents filed last week, DOJ said several Ticketmaster employees used stolen passwords to access confidential information in a bid to ch choke off competition from a rival ticket seller. Ticketmaster employees repeatedly and illegally accessed a competitor's computers without authorization using stolen passwords to unlawfully collect business intelligence, said acting U.S. Attorney Seth Ducharme. Further, Ticketmaster employees brazenly held a division-wide summit at which the stolen passwords were used to access the victim company's computers as, that is, as if that were an appropriate business tactic. According to the court filing, the charges relate to a former employee of the victim company who joined Ticketmaster's parent company, Live Nation, in 2013. So... Um, we already know I talk about this a lot on my channel to use a password manager. Don't reuse passwords. Don't re don't use passwords that have been stolen uh, or on the dark web. And as a matter of fact, don't even use a word as a password at this point. Um, that didn't happen here. And unfortunately, Ticketmaster's ma competition, uh, they were spied upon and it probably caused them to lose business. Um, but, you know, Ticketmaster, w what's going on? I mean, you're going to have a party with your employees because they're stealing your competitor's information. Um, I don't know what kind of culture that is. Um, I don't, you know, I don't agree with it. I, I don't know who would want to work in an environment like that. Uh, and I, quite frankly, after reading this, I don't think $10 million is enough. They need to be fined more. Um, so moving on. Russia, Brexit, Britain. Um, there were a few reports right before Christmas. I didn't get to talk about them on this channel. I do have a new podcast with my buddy Reginald Andre. Um, I will uh, throw some links and we'll be promoting that podcast. Um, we also have an, another YouTube channel that covers that podcast here. Um, and we talk about uh, more business type things, not as much tech as I get into on this channel. Um, but we did talk about uh, some hacks and I did get into on that podcast how uh, Russia was hitting other countries besides the U.S. That U.S. attack was was the biggest by far. By In the history of computers and Internet, that attack on the United States is by far, uh, and I don't want to minimize it, and that took all the news, and rightfully so. Uh, but at the same time, they were hack Russia was hacking Finland. They were hacking Norway. Uh, and now we have basically an article here that says that Putin is – waiting to set his targets on on Britain and to make the Brexit Britain, uh, you know, make it look bad, put egg on its face. Cyber attack uh, in 2021, they want to hit them hard and they're coming out and, and they're saying it. So, um, again, I don't know why the world is putting up with this clown and, and what he's doing and the and the uh, cyber uh, cyber army that he's building. Um my guess is is that in the next two to five years, if he continues on this path, we're going to see some 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 pretty swift action uh, by our not only our governments but other allies and foreign governments that are allies with the United States. Uh, don't want to get too political on this channel, but that's the reality. And unfortunately, this clown keeps interfering with the business that I work in. Uh, I don't like him. I don't like what he stands for. I don't like what he does. I'm wide open about that. Um, and quite frankly, we need to put an end to this guy because he's funding a lot of cyber criminals, not only in, in Russia, but also in Eastern Europe. Um, and then to move on, last one. And I love this article from Digital Information World. 
And we all know what what the coronavirus is doing in, in this um, in this world right now, and the coverage that it's getting from the media. Um, and yes, if we didn't have the attack on solar winds, you guys wouldn't know much of anything about cyber attacks. Solar winds kind of put it on the map. But here's a here's a sobering kind of article, uh, and, and I, I'll probably link to it down below in the description. But cyber attacks can spread nine times the rate of coronavirus, and it's more difficult to recover from the digital pandemic devastation than from COVID-19 uh, pandemic. Uh, and I'm not going to go into the details of this article because I'm running into uh, 25 minutes here, going on a half hour. Uh, and if you stuck with me to the end here, I appreciate you. Please subscribe to our channel. Um, and, you know, he, this article is on point. Cyber attacks and uh, ransomware attacks are more prevalent and are happening to more individuals and companies than COVID-19. And it's more difficult to recover from this, a, a cyber attack, than it is from getting over COVID-19. Now, yes, you can die from COVID-19, but yes, you can die from a cyber attack too. Um, so, you know, you guys got to start really understanding that this stuff is, is deadly serious. It's, it's really prevalent. It's happening more and more every single day. We only know about 10% of the attacks that actually happen. 90% of them go swept under the rug. Nobody ever knows about it. The ransomware attackers get paid. They move on. They attack another entity. They build their empire even more because people keep paying them. Um, and that's the vicious cycle we're in. And this, there is no vaccine for what's going on in the cyber s cyberspace and, and all the criminals that are out there. There's nothing that's preventing these guys from carrying out everything that they want to carry out. And in 2021, we're only going to see it happen more. We already covered it earlier in the video. Look at the APT threats from both Russia and China. Uh, we're going to see a lot of ransomware attacks here in January and February, um, you know, leading up to the new U.S. administration. There's going to be all kinds of craziness going on, um, COVID-19 thing, a thing. So, you know, if you're watching this video and you're an employee and you work from home, just make sure you're vigilant. Make sure you know what you're clicking on, connecting to, emails that you're clicking on, attachments that you're opening. Make sure you check it three times before you decide to click open or, you know, send or put information into a form. Make sure that there's that little lock at the top of the browser. Make sure that the website address is the website address you meant to go to or just type it in yourself. Don't click on a link. All these things can prevent you from, you know, falling victim to one of these cyber criminals. So. That's it for today, folks. Thanks for sticking with me. We'll see you on the other side. Have a great one. Take care.